Today's video is all about my February Poshmark analytic. I'm going to be talking about everything from how many orders I had to how much I made to what sold and what are the kind of key things that I'm gonna be taking with me into this next month. So yeah, we're gonna talk about it all. Um, if you do hear some noise, they are my kids. They are here with me. If you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Ashley. My content revolves around a whole lot of vlogs of me just trying to find balance in what feels like to me a very chaotic life. I'm a mommy trying to do YouTube, I'm in school, now I'm doing Poshmark. So I'm just trying to find a good balance with everything and throughout my vlogs I kind of show you that. And also as of recently I'm posting a lot of Poshmark related content, whether that's thrift hauls, what's sold. If any of that interests you, consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you don't don't miss any of my future uploads. Let's get right into this. If you are new to my channel, this month, February of 2023, this is actually like my first full month of uh, doing Poshmark again. So if you are new to my channel, um, I started my Poshmark closet in January 2019. I did stop after I had my first baby. Being a new mommy, it was just a bit overwhelming uh, considering that I was gonna have my first child. I never jumped back into it. I was always kind of busy doing other things, but I feel like now I am in a better position. I feel like I have found what feels like to me balance. So I decided as of recently, as of the end of January that I wanted to kind of, I guess you could say relaunch my Poshmark closet. So technically, February is my first full month. So that's where I'm at in regards to my closet. So you have a better idea of where I'm at. But anyways, let's get into all of my analytics. Okay, so let's talk about how many available listings I had at the beginning of February versus the end of February. So at the beginning of February, I did start off with 298 available listings. Ended the month of February with 377 available listings. I did keep track of how many listings I added throughout the month of February, and that's a total of 111 listings. So, so I added 111 new listings this month. So I feel like the main theme of February was getting started, getting back on track, growing, learning. February, I had a total of 18 orders or sales. Two of them I did have to cancel because before when I first initially started my Poshmark journey in 2019, I really didn't have any system. So I kind of had clothes like everywhere. They were just like in bags. I I had a kind of a roller coaster of an emotion whenever I sold something because I'd be so excited because I'm like, yes, to sell an order. And then was just kind of stressed and panicked when I couldn't find the item. So I'm not gonna lie, the two orders that I did have to cancel were because um, I couldn't find them. These two items were very old, I guess you could say. They were from 2019 when I listed them then. So. Um, I did have to sadly cancel them. So that was you, I'm so sorry. But yeah, but now I have a better inventory system. I know where everything is. As I'm buying, I'm listing and I'm putting inventory away. I kind of have like a little system in play. So everything is good now. So overall, 18 orders for the month of February. So from those 18 orders, 16 were fulfilled. So out of the 16 orders, I made $322, but minus the Poshmark fees and shipping fees of $64.96, I did make $257 with four cents. The cost of goods for these 20 items that I sold was $35, so that's about $1.75 each in regards to like cost of goods if you were to divide it, which gives me a profit of $222 with four cents. And if you were to divide that by the number of listings that I sold, which was 20, um, that's about $11.10 per listing that I sold. Um, that's how much I made, nothing crazy, but I, I feel like it's a good start to, you know, getting back on track it being my first month. Some of the little kind of key points that I'm gonna be taking away from this month that I've learned that I'm gonna be implementing in these next couple of months are, um, I'm gonna continue picking up J. Jill. Um, I did sell this J. Jill little like chunky like knit cardigan. So cute. I think I paid around 
three dollars for this at the goodwill i'm not too sure on my cost of goods i need to double check i know for sure it was less than four dollars it ended up selling for i don't know what's gonna be up here so j jill is one brand that i'm gonna continue picking up this one particular j jill item did sell the next day the thing is though that i feel like if something sells really fast feel like it might be because i might have priced it too low you know i'm learning as i go um but the fact that i made a quick little flip i mean i'm happy with that yeah so j jill is one brand that i'm going to continue picking up also i've been noticing that um within the month of february i think i'm not too sure how many maternity items actually let me just let me just check out of the 16 orders i did have three orders that um had some type of maternity item so i'm gonna start trying to pick up maternity clothes but the thing is with maternity clothes i'm gonna be very picky with it because it has to have something for example like this item it's very colorful very vibrant this other item it's kind of like a denim i don't know chambray i'm still learning but like kind of like denim material i'm not gonna be picking up like a navy blue maternity v-neck shirt like no it has to have something there has to be some aspect to it whether it's like business pants or very colorful or maybe a kind of like denim dress so little things like that um that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna start picking up also high-end materials i guess you could say so cashmere wool silk because i did sell this cardigan i know i priced this one a little bit low on the lower side but only because as i was steaming and photographing this listing i noticed that there was a bit of um i don't want to say peeling because but like kind of like it was I guess rub too much rubbing i don't know i'm not too sure but i don't know but it was all along the kind of like shoulder area here it wasn't too too noticeable but that's why i listed it kind of lower price that one ended up selling the same day if not the next day um i did get an, an offer of 19 dollars. i think i had listed it for like 22 25 and i ended up getting a 19 dollars offer which i did accept because of the flaw because of the minor flaw but yeah basically going to be picking up high-end material so cashmere wool silk another key point that i'm going to be implementing these next couple of months or kind of like keeping with me is um i'm not going to be sleeping on brands that are not high sellers so that's like express old navy i did sell um two items which i feel was they were pretty fast honestly i did sell this old navy the classic shirt i had actually seen this at the goodwill i got it for like two three dollars i got it because i genuinely loved it so much i told myself that it didn't sell by the end of february i was going to end up keeping it ended up selling which i'm not mad <laughs> honestly i think i listed it and it sold within like a couple of days maybe i'm not too sure i'm not gonna be sleeping on old navy items specifically kind of like the boyfriend shirts the classic shirts kind of like flannels they have to be like in really great condition practically new this one that i picked up it was technically in new condition because it still kind of had like the tag sticking out didn't have like the paper material but it did have the tag this one was actually in my death pile for the longest time and something that i kind of started implementing into like my listing strategy um or kind of trying to attack my death pile was i would get so excited from going to the goodwill and finding like these new pieces so what I would do is I would list one from my new recently thrifted items and then I'd list one from my death pile and then just one over here and then one over there. So I would kind of be working towards recently thrifted items, but I'd, I'd, I'd also be tackling my um, death piles. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, and honestly, it's been working because my death pile is just kind of like shrinking over time. This one particular item was in my death pile for a while. And the thing is like, Items that I personally just don't find um, not interesting, but just like not my taste, not my style. I genuinely think that everyone else has the same taste, which is just not the case. Um, so literally I listed this one item. I had one person add it to a bundle and then they took it out added it to the bundle again took it out and then added it to a bundle again and before they did all of that they had liked it and i do have my posture va which is a posture virtual assistant i love my posture virtual assistant the best i will not be doing poshmark without it literally within the first week of me using it i had seven cells within the first two weeks i had 13 cells so yeah it pays for itself i do have a discount code which is actually 20 if you, if you haven't tried it out you do get 20 percent off your first month you can 
also if it's your first time using them you get two weeks for free which is awesome you don't need a credit card you don't need a debit card it's amazing the fact that you can try it out for two weeks and I feel like two weeks is enough time for you to fall in love with it just like how I did yeah I'll have it linked down below use my discount code actually 20 so back to this so she had added the she had liked the item and then she had added the item right after liking it three times to her bundle so I was gonna wait for my Posture VA to send her an offer. I do have my Posture VA set to sending a private offer 15 minutes after someone likes it. It's 10% off with $4.99 shipping. And that's typically sent out 15 minutes after someone has liked an item. I'm so happy that I was actually on the app at the time that she had liked it and added it to her bundle. I was gonna wait for the virtual assistant to send out an offer, but I saw how many times she had added it to the bundle that I was like, okay, maybe she's trying to probably trying to get like a discount out of it or something so ended up sending her offer privately through the bundle and she ended up accepting it so so that was an express and then also another one that is not so high profit margin I guess you could say is this brand Avenue the reason why I picked up this one is because of all of the fun colors I'm trying to become more picky with all of the items that I choose for my Poshmark closet it has to have some certain aspect whether it's colorful fun bohemian just I have kind of little categories or key points that it has to Kind of hit in order for me to take it home so this one though it wasn't a good brand i did like the colors to it how it kind of had like these uh colors just running everywhere i thought it was a fun piece honestly um someone had liked it i had sent a 10 percent offer for 4.99 shipping my posture va and she ended up she ended up just sending me a message um asking if i could sell it to her for 11 dollars, and i said sure so I mean a sell is a sell. This one I think it did, I, it took like about, I wanna say like a week or maybe two weeks to sell. So profit is still profit, you know? Um, I can use that to reinvest it, go buy a couple more items from the Goodwill. So, okay, so I already told you how much I made. Oh, another thing is that um, in 2019 when I was doing my Poshmark closet, I don't know where I got this idea, but I probably saw it somewhere floating around Instagram because at the time I did have like a dedicated Instagram account for my closet, which I don't have anymore. Or I might have seen it on YouTube. I'm not too sure where I got it from, but basically it was like three for 25. So items, so basically you're gonna have several items within your closet that um, you're okay with selling for three for 25. You're basically gonna put an emoji in the beginning of the title and then within the description, you're gonna put um, all items containing this emoji are three for 25, add them to a bundle and you can send me an offer or I'll send you an offer. So I still had a few from 2019 that I just hadn't edited. I hadn't really done anything with it, honestly. And long story long, <laughs> Um, I had someone find three of these items with these emojis on it and then she added them to a bundle and then she messaged me and I quickly sent her the $25 offer. She purchased it. I then decided that I'm going to be marking a lot of the old items that I had listed in 2019 for three for 25. So I have several items within my closet, including some of my boutique items like jewelry pieces. I'm now doing like three for 25 and I do have it listed within the description. So they kind of, um, they read it and they know why the emoji is like in front of the title also with this order this bundle of three items one of the items within the bundle I had actually misplaced I lost again I didn't have a good inventory system at the beginning of you know my reselling journey in 2019 so it's biting me in the butt now <laughs> um, but anyways I did message her let her know that one of the items was missing from the bundle and I asked her if she wanted to choose anything else within my closet she said yes, and luckily enough, she chose the other item. I sent it. Um, sometimes that's kind of risky because they could come back to you, open a case, and be like, oh, she sent me the wrong item, which in reality, you had already agreed that uh, she wanted this new item. But I mean, uh, she she seemed like a very trustworthy person, even though it's on an app, how, how can one person seem so trustworthy, right? But I mean, anyways. 
sent it to her, she liked it. I noticed that she had actually um, hearted or liked a pair of earrings within the boutique, boutique section of my closet. I, I did apologize for the inconvenience and because of the inconvenience that I was gonna throw in a pair of those earrings that she had liked. Um, and I felt like that was like a way of me kind of, you know, apologizing but also thanking her for, um, you know, not canceling the orders. That's my very long story with that order. <laughs> So, I did have 16 orders, but out of those 16 orders, 20 listings sold. And out of those 20 listings that sold, three of them were boutique items. I do have two YouTube videos within my YouTube channel in regards to wholesale. One of them is, do I think the wholesale within uh, Poshmark is worth it? Because if you weren't aware, Poshmark does have a section where you can buy wholesale items. I kind of looked into it, and for those of you that are new to my channel, I used to have an online boutique store with my sister. Um, we had it for about a year, a year and a half, two years, but then after I had my second child, stop because it was just a little bit too much for me. Um, there is a lot that goes into running an actual like online Shopify store. Ended up stopping that, ended up just listing all of the items within my Poshmark boutique section or closet. But anyways, but I learned a lot about wholesale and everything. So long story long again, um, in that video I talk about whether Poshmark wholesale is worth it. And then I have another video where I talk about some of the places that you can buy wholesale if you don't have a reseller's license. Because some sites you do need a reseller's license to buy wholesale. So yeah, so I will link down those down below. Um, and if not, you can also find them within my Poshmark playlist. They should be in there. So three out of the 20 items were boutique items. Honestly, I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be dabbling with like buying wholesale and boutique items anymore because I just find that I'm not having great results with it. Um, and I also feel like Poshmark is a site where people get on to find particular brands. Yeah, so they're not really shopping for like boutique items. Did add 111 new items to my closet this month. Started in February with 169 listings sold and as mentioned I sold 20 so um, ended the month with 189 listing sold. Okay, so let's talk about some of the goals that I'm setting for this new month in regards to listing and just growing and expanding this little small hustle or small business. As mentioned before, I listed 111 items within the month of February. Um, what I'm trying to do in regards to purchasing new items is I'm trying not to use my own personal money. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, what I mean by that is I'm just trying to use the money that I have coming in from the items that I've sold on Poshmark and then just using that to reimburse, plenish, or just add new items to my closet. I'm trying to stay clear from using, you know, our own personal money because then it can get kind of murky. There's never an end. I always feel like I can add more, I can add more. And so me kind of limiting myself and just using the money that comes in, um, I feel like it gives me better control, better balance. I'm not gonna lie though, I did use $50 of our own personal money to kind of get this going again by going to the Goodwills, good, good thrift stores. I am planning on paying that back. I mean, I don't have to, I know I don't, but it just feels right to me if I kind of add that back to our bank account and kind of keep this its own thing if you if you know what I mean because again it can get kind of murky you know you know you take fifty dollars what's not to say you take another fifty you know it just it's just never ending so so like I mentioned I did list 111 new items within the month of February and I'm actually planning on going to the Goodwill this Saturday this Saturday is the first Saturday of the month so they do have 50% off so I do actually have a hundred and like $20 coming in from my cells. I should be getting them this Friday. I love how Poshmark has that new feature of like instant pay. So as long as like the money is there, you can like instantly get it within a couple, I think it's minutes, I'm not too sure. So it's just like a $2 fee. So I'm gonna be using that and then going and buying whatever I can on Saturday at the 50% off sale. My goal for the month of March is to double the amount of listings. So I listed 111 goal is 222 listings to add which means right now at the moment I have 377 available listings um no 
Well, actually, as of this day, I did list yesterday, so today's actually March 2nd. So basically, once I add those 222 new items at the end of March, I should have 599 available listings. I'm just gonna round it up to 600. That's gonna be my goal. So goal for the end of March is to have 600 available listings. Where regardless if I sell or not, I'm gonna have to find items or buy items to kind of get to that point. So 600 is my goal. I do have enough space right now for for that I don't have planned on getting a storage unit I know a lot of resellers have storage units I know a lot of people have help where they hire someone I just that's not what I want I want to be a one woman show I want to run this little side hustle all on my own overall my goal hopefully before June is to hit a thousand available listings within my closet and I want to be hovering around a thousand listings I do have enough room for that within our home as of now I am using up six containers six and a half container. So overall towards the end of March, I need to have 600 available listings. Aside from like going to the thrift stores cause the cost of goods there are very uh, great. They're anywhere between less than like $3, maybe $4, but majority less than $3. By um, higher priced items, even if I have to kind of pay up a little bit, like maybe pay $20, maybe even $40 for it. But knowing that I will make 200, 300, maybe even $400 off of that. And maybe adding one or two of those type of pieces or items within my Poshmark closet. That's what I want to do within this month. But that is dependent on regards to where I am in regards to listing. So if let's say it's mid-March um, and I haven't listed half of my goal, uh, which is 222, which is 111. So if I haven't listed 111 by mid-March, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not gonna be uh, doing that because, because I do wanna hit that listing goal. Another thing that I have been kind of looking into lately is liquidation. As of right now, I don't think I'm in the position to be doing that because I'm barely getting this going, but it is something that I want to look into. And I've been looking into it and I found one company that I kind of want to try out, but I think that's going to be more of a goal set for maybe next month. Once we have a little bit more uh, funds available. And then the last thing is I do want to attack my death pile. I have three or four huge uh, like trash bags filled of clothes that I haven't listed. My problem with my death pile is that these pieces, they just don't excite me. Um, there's just something about like you going to the Goodwill and buying new items and you're like very excited to list them because you just have like, a, you feel like they're gonna sell fast, I guess. I don't know, you know that they're good brands. These items within my death pile, now they're not terrible brands, but I'm just not oh so excited to list them. But I need to because it's just money sitting there. But anyways, those are my February Poshmark analytics. Let me know how your closet did. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It lets me know to continue uh, making content like this or videos like this. If you are new, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.